Hey guys, welcome back to VR Essentials today. Very exciting as we're here to talk about this beast here, the Bimax Crystal, which is a phenomenal VR headset. But there are still some things going on. I've been doing a lot more testing. And today we're going to be talking specifically about foveated rendering. I'm going to show you what it looks like with and without foveated rendering. And you're going to be a little bit surprised, I guess because they sent me a list of all the games or VR experiences that are compatible with the FOVR. And honestly speaking, well, I was trying today the Aceto Corsa. So we're going to try it. I'm going to give you my feedback. I'm going to give you my test results, if you wish, comparing it at 90 hertz and also 120 hertz with and without FOVR, foveate rendering, um, just so that you can, can see some things. Now, first of all, just some tips here. If you just come to the channel, if you want to play your Pimax, but you run out of batteries inside of your controllers, don't worry, especially for sims like Aceto Corsa, you don't really need your controllers. You just need them maybe to, you know, recenter or just to click a couple of things. That's it. So you can just charge them directly on the USB 3 here and then just plug them into your computer as you're playing. You don't need to wait until they're fully charged for you to actually play. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you today is that Pimax did send me a brand new box. Now, this is the old one with this funny looking input cable there. I can't remember the actual name of this kind of input, but the one that they sent me, let me just show you, is a new one, which is this one here. If I just go to here, there you go. So they sent me the new one. Now, the difference between this one and that one, let me just unplug the cables very, very quickly so you can see, is the actual well, the actual box itself, I think it's an updated box now because it is a USB input. Now it's a USB input instead of the funny uh, cable, which is here. There you go. So let me just put them one on top of the other. So you see, so the bottom one is the new one and the, the top one is the old one. Let me just put it properly so you can see. There you go. So yeah, so the top one is the old one and the bottom one is basically the new one on the bottom, the old one on the top, new one on the bottom, old one on the top. All right, got that correct. Now I have to say that it is much better with this one. Uh, I definitely am saving some battery. The battery is definitely not going as fast as it was with that one because with this, unfortunately, the cable would just always loosen up, always get loose, always have a problem. But with this one, it is fixed, no problems at all. And the other thing that I want to show you guys, another tip uh, for you, let me just get the cables very quickly, is that when you, okay, let me just unplug the DP, there we go. Now, when you have the display port with the cables, make sure that the main display port USB is hooked up to the back. Don't hook it up on the side because, well, for me anyway, I've had so many problems, so many issues where basically the Pimax just does not connect whatsoever to the computer. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I was testing for two, three hours. It took me two hours again to get it connected. And I figured out that basically it's because you have to put the main USB of the display port on this one here, then the main display port on the actual, uh, on the actual computer display port a card and then the other one the less important one on here so you will know the most important one because you will hear a sound on your computer when you plug it in it will sing it will do ding, you know whatever it does to let you know that basically it is connected and then of course be patient on the software because it might not say connected straight away it says connecting disconnect and then connecting and then connected so you know just be patient but the moment that you hear the sounds normally it should be okay if really you have an issue what you need to do especially when it has connected and then you disconnect the cable or something by mistake or by purpose and then you try to connect it again you're going to find that perhaps it won't connect a second time well, you're unfortunately going to have to perhaps restart your computer as that's what I had to do when they actually connected and you saw the starter screen uh, to do the setup of the actual play space. Then I had to redo everything uh, because it wasn't connecting a second time. I had to restart the computer and then I didn't have an issue whatsoever. So just some tips there. All right, guys, let me show you now some actual footage side by side with the 90 hertz of the FOVR with the no FOVR. And I'm going to give you my commentary as the actual 
footage we'll be playing and then we'll move of course to the 120 hertz and uh, do look also on the top sides of the screen as it tells you the super sampling settings that I use. Now these settings I used when I was doing this recording with OBS. When I don't use the recording from OBS, I will just tell you right now what my normal settings are for Aceto Corsa. It's 5536 by 6556. I can go all the way to 250 or 300% with no issues whatsoever. However, there are some issues when the foveated rendering is turned off. So do watch until the end of the video. Of course, there will be quite a lot of information here provided to you. And also I'm gonna show you what they sent me by Max also in another box at the end of this video. And I will be doing more videos, of course, with that accessory that they sent me. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe everybody and also hit the likes if you wish if you will please so that this video gets promoted to more people and we can grow the VR Essentials YouTube community so as you can see here on the footage on the left hand side we have the 90 Hertz with no foveated rendering and then on the right hand side we have the 90 Hertz with foveated rendering and as I mentioned the super sampling on Steam VR here is set at 2596 by 3072 as I'm recording with OBS and unfortunately with OBS I have to downgrade resolution in order to have uh, you know as better gameplay as possible and as smooth as possible with less latency as possible so that is why but as I mentioned before without OBS on I can run it for 300 or 400 percent all the way to basically as I mentioned before uh, to the extreme of 5536 by 6556 everybody so you know do let me know below in the comments let the others know as well what are your super sampling settings for steam vr running an rtx at 2070 by the way uh, with an i7 9700k so pretty good considering here that everything is super smooth uh, the graphics are not too bad although there are some issues here and there i do need to admit that especially with the uh well let's just talk about that the first thing is that basically if I just pause the actual um, if I just pause the frame just very quickly now you'll see that basically on the side now in terms of sorry before I go ahead with this you'll see that reading the actual text is more or less the same there's no real issues there especially at the start of the actual race you can see on the side here basically on the right hand side uh, you can see on the left sorry the right hand side on the 90 hertz wave foveated rendering uh, you can see the Dunlop sign over there and then you can also see it very clearly on the left hand side with the 90 hertz at no foveated rendering as well which says Dunlop and then you see the words girl as well and you can also see on the front of the actual steering wheel no issues there you can pretty much see all the text although of course the small tiny text even though it is pretty clear you can see the 50 above the 4 there and 50 above the 3 uh, also I can see 18 and 18 in yellow there although I do have to get close and if you have a bigger screen of course it'll be much easier for you to see it all the cars everything is pretty much clear there's no issues in the clouds you can see the different textures and all these kind of things so you might be asking me well what is the difference between the two well to be honest the difference is that first of all now there are some you know jagged edges here and there first of all because that is because I brought down the resolution because I had the OBS but that's not the difference the difference between the two is that when I don't run the foveated rendering to be honest with you I have glitches and it is not a cable issue because I did the same test using another frame rate and I have the same issue and then when I turn on the foveated rendering there is no more glitching now I was trying to get the glitch effect as much as I possibly could that resembles the actual glitch that I have on the headset and it is not exactly the same glitch but I put this glitch effect here just to make it very obvious that there is a glitch effect because unfortunately the recording of the screen itself did not show the actual glitch itself but the glitch occurs quite often in fact it occurs much more often than on the video but I didn't want to put it on the video because I didn't want to give you a headache to be honest with you but that is exactly what it gave me when I was playing it was just very uncomfortable every time I was moving my head it's as if the cable had an issue it was not connected properly to its socket or whatever or something like that and it was just glitching all the time but when I had the 
foveated rendering on for some reason it just did not have any glitches whatsoever and by the way the foveated rendering was set on maximum it was not set on balanced and to be honest with you well this is where there is something that's very odd here is that it doesn't seem to actually for this specific VR experience which is Assetto Corsa I didn't really see any foveated rendering effects whatsoever inside of the headset to be honest with you and I'm not quite sure why I don't know why I don't know if it's because the game is just not compatible I don't know why they put it on the list so perhaps they made an issue uh, you know a little slight oversight there maybe it's just not a foveated rendering uh, compatible game because of course developers what they need to do is download the SDK integrate it into the Unreal or Unity game or other game engine that they might be using in order for it to work but as far as I'm concerned it wasn't working for me and also I did try turning off the uh, eye, eye capture eye tracking I turned it off I also turned it on and it made absolutely no difference for me so guys let me know if it's because I have an RTX 2070 if you have another kind of PC let me know in the comments below whether you were able to have foveated rendering with that specific VR experience I will go through the list of all the games that they actually have claimed that it works the foveated rendering with and then try it with those as well and see whether there are you know any updates whether it works or whether it doesn't and let me know guys let the community know in the comments below as well whether it works for you on other games but perhaps not on this one and you know if you could provide a little bit of story there as to what are the effects what changes does it make for you if indeed it does work now the differences between the 120 hertz and the 90 hertz at the beginning I really thought that there were no differences whatsoever to be very frank when you're playing the actual game itself it's very hard to see the differences between 120 and 90 because it's not that many frames different to be honest with you especially when you're playing something so fast as I said to Corsa already at 90 hertz it feels very very smooth so when it's at 120 if it's smoother then it might not be perceptible to the naked eye let's say but when I was looking at the actual screen recording itself that's when I noticed some differences it's, for example the first big difference that I noticed is that when the game is running if you look on the very side of the of, of the frame itself of the of the lens let's say like on the on the where the trees are on the left hand the far left hand side and you compare it to the 90 hertz now on the 90 hertz it's actually more pixelated and there's more ghosting however on the 120 hertz when I pause the frame you will see that the trees are almost perfectly you know almost perfectly no issues there it looks absolutely fine they look very crisp and clear it just doesn't feel like there's a lot of ghosting going on and also they're not so pixelated when compared to the 90 hertz so that is first and foremost the biggest difference between the 120 hertz excuse me and the 90 hertz the other difference that it is that there is I feel that even though there is still a lot of you know jagged edges especially at this resolution because I'm running OBS as I mentioned before um, there's actually less jagged edges but again it's not noticeable to the naked eye but it feels noticeable when I'm actually re-looking at the footage especially on a big screen on my desktop so that is very interesting however I have to admit that the foveated rendering again doesn't seem to make a freaking difference on this game when I'm running whether I'm running at 90 hertz excuse me or 120 hertz it just feels like it's exactly the same whether it's regardless of foveated rendering or not so I don't know if there is really something going on there or nothing going on or whether the difference is so slight that it's just not perceptible to the naked eye again I'd have to ask Pimax for this as to why this game is on their list as apparently it's supposed to have the foveated rendering working on it now the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that when you turn off foveated rendering even at 120 hertz you will also get the glitches which is very very odd to me so this is definitely something that I think Pimax will have to fix when you know you're not doing the foveated rendering option or otherwise it just I don't know it's completely redundant since already the foveated rendering is not working well do leave a comment below as I mentioned before uh, guys for the community to know whether you play some games where the foveated rendering is actually working or whether it's just not working whatsoever so just let me know guys love to know this uh, this from you so the rest of the community can learn with you 
Um, but yeah, so at the end of the day, as I, as I mentioned, with 120 hertz, this is Pimax thing that they need to fix is that there are glitches as well with no foveated rendering. It just, every time I move my head, there's a glitch. It just feels, just gives me a big headache to be honest. So I do have to turn on foveated rendering. For Assetto Corsa, I can't confirm for other VR games, of course. And if you do glitch, do have glitches, excuse me, do leave a comment below as well. I think the community would love to know this feedback from you as well. If you're playing other games like Half-Life Alyx or, you know, Under Citadel or any other games, you know, you might be playing with Pimax, although I'm quite sure you won't be playing those games. Uh, I think you more or less be playing Sims, right? So do let me know if you have issues with like, for example, Flight, Microsoft Flight Simulator or Automobilista 2 or other games of this sort, as I have not tested them so far. So guys, there you go. Now, I wanted to show you what they actually sent me they also sent me, by the way, this cable here. Let me just grab it. They actually sent me the fiber optics cable, everybody, which is actually an accessory you have to buy. It doesn't come with the actual VR headset, just so you know. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe, everybody, as I will be doing some videos, of course, comparing it comparing the gameplay with this cable, the fiber optic cable, and the normal cable that comes in the box with the Pimax Crystal. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching today. I know it was a bit of a long one, but I hope you got some good tips and tricks. And look, this is my HP Reverb D2, still my go-to VR headset. And over there is the DPVR E4 4K, which is mm, okay, but this is really my go-to so far. But I have to say that the Pimax Crystal is starting to become my go-to for Sims. I'm just not really used to the weight still. I'm still trying to get used to that. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a beast, I have to admit. But the audio is fantastic and the clarity inside is gobsmacking. All right, guys, until next time, take it easy. I'll see you in another video very shortly. And if you're curious about Quest 3 stuff, go and check out those juicy videos as well. All right, guys, take it easy. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.